What's up everybody, I'm Joshua Thomas and welcome to my initial thoughts on Gloomhaven. And my initial thoughts are, it's good. Like it's, it's really good. That was a quick video. All right, like and subscribe, bye. You're still here. Well, I already told you my initial thoughts. It's good. I mean, what more do you need to know? I, I mean, I, I could take more time and talk about the quality of the components, you know, the cards and the figures, the tiles. Uh, I could talk about the way the game plays, the way the battle system works, the enemy movement, their, their you know, the boss cards and and what dictates the way that they attack and target characters. But there's no need to because this is just a really great game and you can take my word for it, right? No? Okay. So, let, where to start? Where to start? I mean, you can see here, here is a typical battle setup. This is for the first mission and you've got your enemies that uh, actually the uh, color of their stand does matter. The white stands are just regular common foes, and the yellow stands are what are considered to be elite foes. And the differences can be seen on the enemy stat cards right here. And you can see that this is the elite side, and this is the common side. And right in here, the middle, are their stats, and you can see that the elite has better stats uh, than the common, the first one being health, uh, and then I'm looking at the upside down. We've got movement, attack, and range uh, in that order. So there's that. And then the way that they work is through these cards, which have an initiative value on it, and it tells you whether they get a movement bonus or an attack bonus, in this case, they get an attack penalty of negative one, but they get a range bonus of plus one because they're archers, and if they hit the target, then they're also going to immobilize them. And then this symbol in the bottom corner here is the shuffle symbol. You'll see that in just about all the decks, and that means that we reshuffle the deck and draw again. That's, that's just one of the characters. There's so many different characters, and if you look here, you can see how their damage and stats are tracked. This is the uh, Living Bones, which is one of the first things that you're going to encounter in Scenario 1. Uh, oh, but, and then, just the way combat works for the characters, it's even more dynamic. Uh, this deck right here is your Attack Modifier deck, and it's basically a D20, but, when you use one of those cards, went out to D19. And now, it's a D18. So, there's that modification there, that little bit of randomness that kind of takes care of, hey, you know, is your character gonna flub up a little bit or get a critical hit and there's a plus two for damage. There's a minus two. Let me find the shuffle cards in here. There's the critical hit, times two, and then there's the miss card. And when you get either one of those, once again, you reshuffle your deck, and you're back up to 20 cards. Now, this can also be modified more by adding curses or blessings or leveling up your character so that you can maybe take out some of the zero cards and exchange them for plus one cards, or maybe you get to get rid of a negative one card and not replace it with anything. And then there's the way that each individual character's attacks work. So one thing that's important is there's two ways that your character can fall in battle, and that's, check out these awesome trackers here, that's if they lose all of their health, and they go all the way down to zero, or if they exhaust or lose 
which is the proper term in this game, every single one of the cards in their hand. Now, in order to get these cards back, they take short rests, but if they use their really powerful abilities, such as this one down here, it's going to have that X symbol at the bottom, and that means that they lose that ability for the rest of the scenario. Basically, it's, it's their um, kind of limiting how the powerful abilities work and allowing you to use some of the less powerful abilities. So, you have two different stacks here, and I'll show you right here. You've got your discard, where you can discard cards if there is no symbol, or if you just use the generic two attack or two movement. And then, on the other side, you've got lost, which is for your more powerful abilities with the X symbol on them. And I'll show you a card up close. So each round, each of your characters is going to do a action on the top or the bottom of the card and an action on the top of, the, of another card. So you've got two cards. Let's say I'm going to use this ranged attack for my scoundrel because, hey, she specializes in some ranged attacks. And then I'm going to loot the surrounding area. And what looting does is allows me to pick up the coin that the fallen enemies have dropped. So you'll notice that uh, it has loot one there. So that means I can loot one coin that's adjacent to me. Also, if I'm standing on a coin at the end of a successful movement, I just get that coin as well. And now these coins might have a one on them, but you're gonna be using tables uh, that are in the manual to help you judge, okay, this one coin represents two gold pieces actually. So, uh, and then in the higher level battles that you have, these might end up representing three, four, or five gold coins. But the way the battlefield works is great. Now the enemy, just in case you're wondering, the enemy is just dumb. So they are going to, or they're, they're dumb and lazy. So they're going to attack the closest person with the least amount of moves that they need to get to them. And they're going to do whatever it says on their card. Move plus zero, attack plus zero. So they'll just do their normal attack. But just because the enemy are lazy and kind of dumb doesn't mean that they can't hurt you. Because in these overwhelming numbers, yeah, they're, uh, trust me, three archers shooting at you can absolutely pincushion you. Uh, and that can cause you to fall in battle. Another great way that this game works is by using elements. And I like it not just because it's got this elemental chart in there, but because you don't have to use magic to infuse a room with elements. Um, my scoundrel has the ability to use a smoke bomb, which is going to infuse the room with darkness. So a smoke bomb fills the room with smoke and therefore darkness. And as time goes by, as the turns goes by, that smoke is going to wane and the darkness in the room is going to wane as well. But as long as it's in one of these two spaces, I can then use an ability that uses darkness with the X over it and it's going to give me bonuses. Uh, that's just an example of the rogue's ability. And when uh, we use an element, it becomes exhausted or inert. And the neat thing about it is you can have darkness and you can have light in the same room, infused in the same room, so two different characters or the same character can use them. But there's magic that can infuse rooms with elements. And then, let's say the Cragheart, he just picks up a boulder and tosses it and blows up and it, there's, the room is just filled with earth. So, the room gets infused with earth, and you get to use it. And it's that easy. Then there are all of these tokens that can also track enemies' statuses, uh, whether they're boons, or they're immobilized, or they're poisoned. And then there's quick references that let you know 
what all of those different statuses do. The quick references are really great, and especially when you're having to look up all sorts of rules and uh, you, you're having trouble finding them. Trust me, your first couple of times playing, you're going to be looking in the rule book a lot. But the game isn't just these little scenarios that you play, and trust me, there's over 90 different scenarios in this campaign book. Um, different things to keep track of. You get these sheets that you can keep track of your gold and your experience as you level up your characters through the campaign. But there's also a casual way to play as well. Now, the really neat thing is that every character who's playing in a campaign is going to be able to buy some starting items. The items work amazingly as well. They either become lost or exhausted, and by resting you can gain back certain items, and then at the end of a scenario you can recoup certain items. But nobody just goes to Gloomhaven to live there. They all have reasons for being there, and these reasons are the quests that they are on. And once they are able to accomplish their quest, say the scoundrel wants to be a Goliath toppler and be in four uh, battles or scenarios involving bosses, in other words, toppling the really powerful people, uh, in order to make the world a bit of a better place. Kind of, a, kind of an odd thing for the scoundrel to do, but hey, if that's her reason for being there, then that's it. But once she completes her objective, once she completes the quest, her reason for being in Gloomhaven, she retires. She packs her bags and goes home or lives in Gloomhaven gloomily ever after? I don't know. And then at the bottom, once we've completed this, we open another box, and this box contains a brand new character. In fact, there are 17 different characters in Gloomhaven, and you only start off with six of them. What are the rest of them? Well, Christopher, he got a quest that uh, sounds like he really wants to bring some turmoil to Gloomhaven, and so I'm not sure how his is going to turn out. But when he completes his quest, he opens this box, and all we have to go by is this very Cthulhu mind flare squid looking creature. This this does not look like a friendly person, but this becomes a playable character who will also have a quest and a reason for coming to Gloomhaven. And these quests are randomly generated by a deck. You draw two and you think, okay, well, Mr. Squid wants to bring water to Gloomhaven. I don't know, I'm just making that up. Gloomhaven has a port, by the way, so I don't think water is a big concern of theirs. But all of these other characters are sealed by these little seal stickers, and so you have no idea what's inside them. You only have this symbol to go by. So there's that right there, and then there are also other boxes in here. Oh, by the way, I highly recommend getting yourself a pencil to uh, keep in the box, and I'll explain why later. But just looking at all the boxes in here that are sealed, what could that be for? I mean, look at that. That's, it's a saw blade. What, what could possibly, what kind of character class and race could be using a saw? Is it a surgeon? Huh? Are we gonna have a surgeon in battle? Or are we just gonna have some kind of bloody dismemberment saw kind of guy? I don't know, but it's intriguing. There are also other sealed envelopes that you'll find in the box, and it'll tell you when to open them in certain scenarios. But these scenarios that you go into, once you finish them, and you're packing your bags and counting out your treasure and your experience points, you can go back to Gloomhaven. There are so many things that you do outside of the scenario. It's This is... Gloomhaven is as close to being a, an RPG video game as you can get without it being electronic on a TV or computer screen. Because when you travel back to Gloomhaven, you're going to encounter random city events, and you're going to 
draw them and read aloud, and then you're going to get some options. And once the party has voted on what option they want to do, then you're going to flip it over and read what you have wrought. It might be good, it might be bad, it might be ugly. Who knows? But if you guys decide to go from dungeon to dungeon without going back to Gloomhaven, then you're going to encounter a road event. So you've got two giant different event decks that we've yet to even go through yet. We've, we've hardly even scratched the surface because we've only played the first two scenarios which are linked together and so when we get back together again, uh, me and my friends will decide, do we want to go straight to the next dungeon or do we want to go back to Gloomhaven and go to the shop? Now, you might be wondering, what's this board underneath the tiles? And I'll let you see real quick. Look at all these tiles that haven't been used and all these bags full of goodies. Bags not included in the game. I had to use uh, get sandwich bags. But if you look here, we've got this almost vestigial board for Gloomhaven that just lets us see where different locations are. And we have a big few tiles or uh, papers with stickers on them that are going to go on this board. Um, most of these are locations, and some of them are achievements, which will go up here uh, at the top. I'll move it up here so you can see the achievements right here. And then the different locations are going to open up to us as we journey through Gloomhaven and find out about different places. We found out about this place and this place through our encounters in the city and in the dungeon. Uh, and then at the bottom, you'll notice a prosperity tracker. And we've put an X in there because in defeating these bad bandits, we have made Gloomhaven a safer place. <laughs> And in doing so, it gives us access to more items that we can purchase in Gloomhaven eventually. Hey, that's the wrong deck. Let's uh, not get more enemies out. So many different cards in here uh, to utilize in the game. But as Gloomhaven's prosperity rises, the shops will be able to carry more types of potions. And we got more potions, more potions, more potions. And weapons and other types of gadgets that can be used to increase our character's um, stats and uh, win chances. And there are limitations like, you, hey, your character can only use one helmet. Uh, this is a two-handed weapon, so your character can't have more than one of those. But uh, you just, there's this just, just interesting world that has been created here. And we've, once again, you know, we've only scratched the surface and we've got so much more to go through before we can truly just get a full experience of Gloomhaven. But for all those reasons above, that's why Gloomhaven is number one on Board Game Geek. And that's why there's really no need for me to tell you all that stuff. And you can just go on my word and say, hey, Gloomhaven is a really good game. Thanks for watching my initial thoughts on Gloomhaven. I really do hope you guys will like and subscribe to the Felroad Express. We put board game videos out and tabletop gaming videos out as often as we can, and we just love having fun with them. So be sure and check us out on Twitter and Facebook as well, and hope to see you next time. Bye.